Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. In the current economic climate, mining companies should be doing all they can to cut costs and improve efficiencies. And the savviest of companies are seizing established technologies to do just that. Mining Weekly editor Martin Prima joins me to tell us more. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Chanel. In this age of advancing technologies, mining companies have the opportunity to take advantage of the know-how that other, se other sectors have perfected. Are mining companies using technologies perfected by others? You know, mining companies have been terrible laggards because, you know, they've invested for half centuries and that has been their strategy. They wanted to put the plant in and then just continue doing what they wanted to do. So if a new technology arose, it was very difficult for the companies with that new technologies to persuade mining companies to actually adopt that technology because the mining companies would look at their capital and say, we've sunk this capital, let's just keep doing it the way we are now because it's the most economic. So they developed a terrible reputation. In fact, a lot of supplying companies often became uh, frustrated with them. But now what has happened, there's been a, a long lag in which they haven't improved their own technology. But industries all around them have streaked ahead. And you know, we, we know that the automotive industry, the manufacturing industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and electronics, particularly consumer electronics, has just streaked ahead. Mining can now sit back and say, these technologies have now matured, particularly IT, information technology, and data science. And it has reached a point where you can analyze to a point of, um, just knowing everything about your metal in the ground, about uh, how you can get it out in a more precise way. And so they are trying now to apply at a late stage technologies that others have perfected. And the story on the street is that, you know, if mining companies don't start doing this, they're going to fall behind. And the mining companies that do grasp it, because it now is possible to apply and reconfigure, uh, particularly even within sunken capital areas. Uh, those companies that don't do it uh, stand the risk of falling behind quite badly, which of course will mean that they could be gobbled up by the other companies. So I think all of them are looking at coming abreast with technology because it makes so much sense. It can actually create surges in, in income over a period if they can get it right. It can be a situation where even if the metal price doesn't rise or the mineral price doesn't rise, suddenly you've got this influx of cash in substantial form because of your adoption and reconfiguration of existing technologies, which means there's little risk to you. You're not reinventing the wheel, but you can use it with your, within your existing infrastructure to do so much better. In recent years, the mining industry has placed a lot of emphasis on automation and mechanization, but this requir it requires a large capital outlay. Is there scope to advance without m major capital investment? Well, this is the thing now. You know, we've been hearing a lot about mechanization. We've even been hearing more about automation. And one expected that you know, at uh, process level, there would be a lot of automation. At mining level, there'd be a lot of uh, mechanization. But there's a different emphasis now. They're looking for value from little bits of capital. <laughs> so they don't have to outlay enormous amounts of capital and, and their return on what they do can be very substantial. That's why some people are saying, you know, there could be technology induced money booms <laughs> in going in the next decade or so, because suddenly you could just have this outpouring of value because of what you've done. And, and although most of the people were, were hunting technology, a lot of them are now hunting value because the technology is there. They don't have to do it. And, you know, they've always been little, they've been sticklers when it's come to technology. Often, you know, a technology provider will approach a mine and the mine will immediately say, hey, this is, this is going to be our intellectual property, isn't it? So they've been very competitive in that way and they haven't wanted to allow open innovation now they're allowing and seeing, look, this is, <laughs> it benefits us. Even if we don't have the full intellectual property of all this, we, we might have a discount that we can get because it's been developed with us, or maybe there, there'll be certain uh, 
benefits that we'll get because we have actually participated in this, but they haven't got that very hard-nosed attitude of the past saying, look, this is going to belong to us. Hey, this, when you come out of here, whatever you develop is ours. They're not so worried about that anymore. Mining companies have generally adopted a large aggregated approach that generated waste. Can this waste now be reduced? Well, waste is the thing they want to get rid of. They want precise mining. And, you know, waste in this industry has been so heartbreaking, you know, because the way we've gone about mining, we've lost so much material. And if you look in the gold industry, firstly, they leave 40% behind because they need the pillars there for, for safety, etc. And then of that 60%, they lose another massive percentage because of the way they blast and then the way they transport. So that has also been replicated in other industries. So what they're trying to do is now minimize the waste. In other words, when we refer to waste, we refer to material that is not material that gives you a return. So it's a non-pay uh, material. And if you look at how big that has become in the world, you can see that, uh, say, in the case of a copper mine, to get out 40 grams <coughs> of, of kilograms of copper, 40 kilograms of copper, you know, the waste that, that you now have to bring with it, in other words, the, the non-pay, the, the non-copper, is like 16 times more than it was in the 1900s because of the fact that we're going deeper and deeper, a lot of the mines are going deeper. And you also use double the water and um, you use a lot more energy to get all this up. So it's actually becoming unsustainable. You know, if you continue along this route, you're going to reach a point where conventional methods are just not going to cut. They're, they're not going to get you that cop out of the ground. But they're so ambitious at the moment that they're feeling that they they can see a pathway to extracting that 40 kilograms of copper if we use that as a, as a yardstick with zero waste and waterlessly. Because they're using technologies, you know, coarse particle um, um, technology that enables them to extract at a or, or na it allows them not to have to grind down the material to 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 the micron level that they've been used to they can bring out bigger particles and in bringing out bigger part particles they save <coughs> a lot of water for instance because mines tend to put water in and then want to take the water out and then you end up with the slimes dam and we know there have been tragedies with the slimes dam. We've had our own tragedy at Mary Sprite where Brazil has just had a tragedy. So if you can do without that water, it's very important. And recycle the water. Don't use the water. Go for a waterless situation. So these are the targets that are going through and they don't want these big aggregated situations anymore. They're looking for a modular approach because we know we have like um, every four years or so we can use cell phone every five years we might consider getting a new car whereas these mines have gone on forever with this technology that they've sunk a lot of capital into they now want an opportunity to move if there's a technological change so instead of having the, the enormous aggregation you know we've had bigger vehicles and all sorts of things we've always heard of particularly with open cost they're saying, no, let's go for a modular approach. If we're going to build a modular uh, a, a plant, let it be a small plant. Let us think small. Let us change our mind. Not big, small. So that we can be watching technology and the next module might be an advance uh, on the, the previous one and we can keep improving if, if we do this in a smaller way. Also, they're looking from an energy point of view of generating energy from sun and wind and <coughs> possibly also using the gravitational energy that you've got, the kinetic energy, because of your deep mines. And sometimes there's, there is water coming down that mine that can turn turbines, it, create own, it can create some, generate some electricity of its own. Every bit of innovation they're looking at, and this innovation is end-to-end. -end. So it also you know, goes through the point of innovation in your approach to communities you know are you going to perhaps involve the communities in some form of agriculture is there going to be innovation there because your footprint is probably going to be smaller you won't need as much of that land as, as but you still own that land you know what is going to happen to it 
you also innovation with your approach to government. So, there, you know, it's, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, situation, holistic. And they want to make sure that um, every point of that uh, is challenged by new thinking so that minds can be organizations that can really function well within the ups and downs of the metal and mineral prices. Thanks for chatting to us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Chanel. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.